<laughs> this. In this video, I'm gonna do something that I've never done before and that I am a little bit creeped out about, but that still needs to be done. And that is to unbox this box of dead insects that I've ordered. And I'm gonna talk more about why I did this. But first, I wanna discuss this question. Is it okay to kill an insect for macro photography? A lot of people do this. They uh, kill or freeze insects so that they are completely still when they're gonna do a deep focus stack. And some people think this is very wrong and some people think it's completely all right. And it seems like it's very divided. I asked this question yesterday on my uh, community tab on YouTube and an overwhelming majority thinks it is not okay to kill insects to do macro photography. And in general, I tend to agree. Just because for me at least it feels wrong to kill even if it's a small insect with almost no brain. It, it doesn't feel good to kill an animal. Uh, that is at least how it feels for me. When I go out to do macro photography, I have always approached it as a wildlife experience. I enjoy going out in nature and discovering insects. Uh, it's always a complete surprise what you find you never know beforehand and that is a big part of the fun. And then I try to shoot the insect in its natural environment without hurting it or disturbing it too much. And uh, I enjoy this because also of the challenge of trying to photograph an insect in its natural environment. It's certainly a lot harder than photographing a dead insect indoors, right? And also when I look at other macro photographers work, I can pretty easily spot if an insect is dead, I think. And that always creeps me out a bit and the image is less enjoyable for me to look at if I know that the insect is dead. I, I don't know why, but that is how it is for me. So I much prefer looking at uh, photos of live insects and that is also probably part of the reason why I enjoy shooting live insects. But everyone is very different and we tend to rationalize our own behaviors to make them more okay. I think part of the reason I enjoy doing freehand macro photography out in nature is because I am very impatient. I would never have the patience to do a deep 200 photo focus stack in the studio. That is just, I don't know, for me it's just too much work for one single photo. I want to just take the photo in a few seconds and uh, that is usually what I have before the insect flies away. And that's completely fine because I love that a uh, feeling of trying to quickly capture a moment before it flies away. But I am faced with a dilemma. I live in Sweden, one of the more northern countries in the world, and our insect season uh, goes from around May to early September, and the rest of the year there are no insects outside unless you dig very deep for them. And uh, that's a problem for me because I try to make a livelihood uh, doing a YouTube channel about macro photography and most people are mostly interested in macro photography of insects. Of course it's possible to do other kinds of macro photography as well, which I do a lot in the winter. One of my next videos is a comparison of uh, four or five different macro photography diffusers. Uh, to see how they differ in the rendering and then people are going to want to see how do they work when you shoot insects and if there are no insects to shoot well then I would have to either order live insects and keep them at home uh, or try to get some dead insects either by killing them myself or by ordering them online. And uh, between these options, I felt like the best one for me would be to order some dead insects online because I don't have the confidence to, or the heart <laughs> to kill insects myself. I am not sure if I would do a good job or if I would conserve them properly without them starting to rot or whatever. I want to let uh, professionals do that. And I wouldn't want to keep live insects at home because then I would have this burden to try to feed them and care for them and frankly I don't really have time for that. For me personally I try to avoid killing insects when I can. If I have to kill an insect, for example if uh, my son has a tick 
of course I'm gonna kill it, of course I'm gonna try to get rid of it uh, from his body. Or if there is a mosquito indoors uh, that is really annoying, I'm gonna kill it, I don't uh, have a problem with that. Uh, the same thing with if it is a fly that is very irritating when I'm trying to sleep, I'm probably gonna kill it, or at least try to chase it away. Uh, but I really don't enjoy killing insects and I would definitely not kill an insect when I'm out doing macro photography. And I was a bit hesitant actually to order these and I think I will be creeped out now in a moment when I'm gonna open them because I don't know, there's, there is something about dead bodies, no matter if it's a human, a big animal or an insect, it just creeps me out a little bit. But in this case I found it necessary to order these. And yeah, I didn't kill them myself, but indirectly I kind of killed them because I ordered them. This is a package from Bugs Direct, which is a company in the United Kingdom. It was the best uh, website I could find to order insects, at least within Europe. And uh, I ordered from there because the price was okay, they seem very serious, and uh, they write like this uh, regarding how they source their insects. All of the entomology specimens we offer have been sourced sustainably from our network of insect lovers worldwide. We work closely with butterfly breeders, collectors and entomologists worldwide. And uh, it's hard to check up on this, but they seem like serious people. So I hope and think that these were killed in a proper way. So let's unbox them and see what we find. What I ordered was, I think it is... I think it was 15 uh, random insects, so I have no idea what will be in this box. Uh, will be interesting to see how big or small they are, and what parts of the world they come from, I have no idea. And I am a bit creeped out about this, I have to be honest. First we have a little thank you note. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. I have not had any contact with this company uh, except making this order. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, uh. Some of them are really big. Look at this one. I am a bit creeped out about this. I'm not used to seeing big insects, you know, I'm a, I'm a Swedish guy. Here is a beautiful butterfly. Here are uh, smaller beetles. These feel, these I'm not that creeped out about because I'm used to seeing beetles this size. So for some reason that feels more comfortable for me. And they are packaged really carefully. You can really see that they took care. There is another guy. Woo! <laughs> Uh, this uh, this one is too big for me to be comfortable. I'm not sure I'm, I will be able to look at it again. Okay, uh, uh. we have some some different uh, bugs and uh, butterflies in here. Most of them are yeah, they are mixed sizes, mixed colors, and uh, they will probably be perfect for me to try out diffusers, try out lenses, and uh, in general do macro photography experiments during the winter. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to make this video to explain why I sometimes photograph dead insects and where I got them from, so you will know when I'm doing videos with these insects in them. And yeah, please leave your opinion in the comment section about what you think about this. Is it okay to do what I did to order dead insects? Is it okay to freeze insects to make them slower or glue insects to a surface to make a better composition? I definitely think it is not okay, but I think I know that some people think it is okay. Thank you for watching this video. See you soon again. Over and out. Bye bye. This is my latest bonus video exclusively for Patreon supporters. It's a 20 minute tutorial where I teach you my best tips for capturing wildflowers. And every month I add a new bonus video to my Patreon library. It's currently 13 videos. If you become a patron of mine for $5 per month, you get access to this growing library of bonus videos. And more importantly, you can sleep better at night knowing that you ensure 
the continued existence of this YouTube channel. I do this full time, but I do not yet earn a full time living, so your contribution is greatly appreciated and very much needed. Go to patreon.com slash Michael to sign up. You can cancel anytime. Thank you.